This is Grandma Glory again. And I got another wow wow recipe. This time is sweet potato pie. And most people that bake sweet potato pies, they say, mine's the best. I do mine this way. But I have to be biased here. Mine's is one of the best. And I can truly say, once you taste mine's, you will never go back to Patty. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do concerning the sweet potato pie, you never peel the potato. Why? Because a lot of the uh, flavors is in the skin. So if you uh, peel the potato with a knife before uh, you boil it, then you're boiling out a lot of the flavors of the potato. So what I normally do when I get it from the store, I wash it off, even though they be washed, I still wash it off because you don't want that sand or little dirt to be in the boiling water. And I also cut the ends off. This is a regular cutting knife. I cut the ends off on both sides of the potato because if you boil it on, you have to pull it off when it's hot. So once you have the potatoes uh, boiled, let them sit in the strainer because potatoes carry a lot of water. And so, as you can see, all this water, and even more, I pulled a little bit out because I didn't have a big edge, would be in your batter, and you don't want that. So what we gonna do, I just put this in here, because that's gonna be really good. Once you do that, you gonna easily, see how that slides off? And you don't want to leave that on because I just don't even know and that's not part of the, that's part of the skin. So that just easily come off that way. And if you see any dark spots that's in the potato before you put it in your bowl, just take it out. I don't see any. Okay, I'll put that in there. Skin this one the same way. It's going to make a nice pie. It's going to make two pies, but uh, sometimes it's be a little over. And so that's even why I'm going to, uh, there's a dark spot, I'm going to take that off. Okay. Now what kind of dark spots are you talking about? Can you kind of Sometimes a sweet potato, when you buy them, if you don't check them real well, they have a lot of uh, dark spots on them going into the skin of the potato. And some go very deep. So when you choose your potatoes, make sure that you don't have a lot of dark spots on it because when you, if you do, once you boil them out, you're going to have to be doing a lot of digging. So the next thing we're going to do, and most people don't do this, some of the best cooks don't know this technique. Before you add butter, before you add sugar, before you add your nutmeg and all these things, you must take out the strands. And what we call that, those are little bit of strands. I'm not gonna put my butter, nothing. I'm gonna show you how to remove strands from your yams. Okay. It's not too loose right now because I don't have nothing in it. And I don't want anything in it. The longer you think, the more strands you're going to get from the potato. Can you say that again? It was the longer you be, the more strands you're going to get off the potato. Most people just keep beating and they add stuff in like that. But you don't want to do that. I'll rinse this off. And I normally do this about four times. Well, what makes me stop? Because I don't usually use a small, I usually make about four or five potatoes, uh, pies at one time. And so I have to rest much more than four times. So we're gonna do this again. Let me see those strands I before still got you. Strands. Let me see the strands. That's a lot. 
You don't oh, want okay. you don't want that in your pot because when you when you do bake it, 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 it will show the little strands when you cut your pie. That's something that should not be in there. So by taking out the strands, what does that give it you makes like a the, more smooth? It, 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 it's smoother and it also makes the texture better. Mm. It also let the, the uh, consumer know that you really uh, took pride in removing strands from your potatoes. My mother always did that, so I never forgot. That's two pounds, that's two pounds. Since, oh, I'm sorry. Since this, uh, oh, this now right that's here, that's I will stop right here. You can't get no more than that. Now, if it was a bigger batch, I am going to do it one more time, though, to show you it's getting lesser and lesser and lesser. just like that. Mm. I can choose to do this because it can always be that way or I can choose to dump it which I am since I have it on. Uh, I've stopped it. But when it gets short like that, you ain't gonna be able to remove them all because they're short and they, it is less. But at least do it at least uh, three or four times. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, when it comes to pies and cakes, I do use measurements so you can know and I can have a memory of what I did. So uh, my second thing I usually put in, and my butter normally be melted, but I'm not going to do it right now. Just going to dump it over in here. How much butter was that? That is a strip and a half of butter. To two pies. It's gonna make two pies and maybe a little more because once you put all your ingredients in, it's gonna be more than that. So I'm gonna put my butter. And I'm sorry, I normally put my sugar before I put my butter. So, but it's not gonna hurt anything. The sugar would have just made it a little more looser than the butter. So I haven't, I haven't cleaned that up enough, and I'm gonna go ahead on and use my sugar. I'm gonna start off with one cup. Okay, one cup of sugar. I'm leaving that half just in case, because when I get everything in, I'll taste it. And if it need more sugar, then I'll add it. We'll be starting off with one cup of sugar. show you this. In the water, I'm going to drain this so you can see. Mm. 
And this is just to show how much strand you took out of the potatoes. Yes, I'm going to put it on the plate. And let you see. All of this is unwanted strands that you want you don't want to put in your potato pie. All of these are strands. That much from two pies. Okay. Now this look like it's going to be a little more than two pies. Usually I get two eggs to, to a pie. But since this is a little more, I'm going to add five eggs. Those were some big potatoes, though. My potatoes usually be much, much bigger than that. I use the beet two at a time, and then I do. Say that okay. one more time. Your cake, your potato batter should look like cake batter. If your cake, if your potato batter, batter is real stiff, it's kind of hard to move around, you're going to have a very heavy, heavy sweet potato pie. And you don't want that. So if it don't look like cake batter, and it don't taste like her ice cream, that's how I judge my Okay, let my me pies. ask you one question before you turn the blender back on. How many eggs are we using for the two pies? This will make, those two will make two pies plus. And since I know that it's going to be more than just two pies, uh, two pies, I put an extra egg because you got to compensate for the extra batter that's there. So two so eggs per two, pie. Two eggs per pie. But you, you, since, you have a little bit more. And so I so you use the extra. I, I use extra. So five eggs total for yes. this. Yes, uh -huh, for this. in all of my pies. No imitation uh, in my, uh, for my ingredients. So I'm going to use one tablespoon of lemon extra. My mother taught me this. Nobody used to do this, so this is, you all getting something extra. This is vanilla extra. Use the same thing. One tablespoon, oh, two more, that's all right. Vanilla is one tablespoon of that. Pie. Tablespoon of the vanilla extra. I'm going to use a teaspoon mm -hmm. of cinnamon. to use a teaspoon of nutmeg. This nutmeg, sometime when it bakes out, 
it have little uh, black spots in it because sometimes it's not as I don't know whether I might, did I get the I don't think this is the one they got wrong. I got two types. And I was told that your spices keep longer when you put them in the refrigerator. So I have my sage, I have my nutmeg, I have my cinnamon. I don't put the liquid in, but I do put the uh, nutmeg and the cinnamon. So this one here is a little lighter. Take this spoon, it's not lumpy like the other one. And it's a little just like my sage, so I'm gonna have to make sure this don't say sage. Okay, it's in the name. Oh, that's not name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Teaspoon of that. I've got my cinnamon, got my lemon flavor. And now all I'm going to do is mix this up. to do when you like if you wait and make or uh, start cooking for Thanksgiving make your pies at least a day before because once they get they'll sell that way and they'll be easy to cut okay there's something else I want to say concerning this let me beat this a little more I like how you bring that out slowly, it, you know. Because if I don't, if the, blend, if, the black, if the blender was still going while I lift it up, it'll be all over the place. So that's what you, don't, you want to avoid. Let me taste this to see. I tell my son all the time, tell him how to make these pies. If I told him, if it don't taste like ice cream, you need something else. So let me see. Look like I need maybe a little more sugar. A little more sugar. This was a half a cup. This is gonna be a fourth. About a fourth, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So far for these two pies, we've added a cup and a fourth of mm -hmm. sugar. Mm-hmm. Look like I want. I need to taste my vanilla. The lemon, I don't usually make an equal amount. So, and the flavor. Tablespoon of lemon extra, mm -hmm. a tablespoon and a half of vanilla. The vanilla is supposed to be the dominant of the two flavors. Okay. What I normally do when I make my own pies. Mm. It tastes like ice cream. That's all you have to do when you're making 
Grandma Gloria's sweet potato pie. And so, let's see. See how smooth that is? Look like a cake batter. Take mm. this, stick it around like that. Make it level. And meanwhile, I add the five eggs because it will be a little mm. more. Okay, fill them up like so. So, it's a good thing I added five eggs. Because we have some left. And I got more pie shells. So, let's bring out, that's the piece. Let's bring out the finished product. And I have to admit to you, my pies never be this dark. I was doing something else, and I think they stayed about 10 minutes or longer than I wanted to. But I want to say this to you. Normally, I would not cut this pie until the next day. Should I cut it? Yes. <laughs> I'll want some. <laughs> All right, you want to touch it? That's it. Normally, I let it set for a day. This one was made this morning. Let's see. And I used the deep pie crust. Not the little shallow one. See, when you don't let it set, it won't come out. Because this is still kind of warm. You don't want it to fall to the side like that. Once you let it set, but it didn't run out. But oh, so this was made today, this morning. Yes, this morning. But when it's set over, overnight, not in the refrigerator, just on the counter. Mmm. This is delicious. Ooh, I can't wait mm. to turn this camera off and taste that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> anyway, this is Grandma Gloria. Sand and gold. When you do your Thanksgiving, include Grandma Gloria's sweet potato pie. And when you taste it, you're going to say, wow. This is good. Bye-bye. See you next time.